Hey, what's happening? YouTubers are back with a brand new action figure review, and today we're taking a look at the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman based on his appearance in the Dark Knights of Steel. And just like we always do with all the reviews, let's get started with the box art first. So it's your standard McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse box. You see the logo on the top, Batman, Dark Knights of Steel, and on the back is the image artwork of Batman sitting on this awesome throne, which this figure probably won't be able to do. <laughs> but that's enough about the box art. Let's go ahead and get Batman out of the box. All right, here's Batman out of the box. Let's take a look at his accessories first. So he comes with a DC base plate that you see with all McFarlane Toys figures. Just like all DC Multiverse figures from McFarlane Toys, he comes with a data file card. So it's the same image artwork you saw on the back of the box, which I think this looks really badass. But on the back is the data file. Feel free to pause it if you want to go ahead and read it. And <laughs> it's the same description as you've seen before, but whatever. <laughs> It does come with one weapon accessory and it's a sword and I gotta say I really like the paint finish of this sword. It looks amazing and all the details and patterns in there. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I haven't been too impressed with some of the swords they've come out with this year. For example, this Donna Troy sword. You know, with all due respects, this just looks like a 3D print. Like, side by side you can see what a little bit more paint work can do to bring out the sculpting work of a, of a weapon accessory and like this one could have used a lot more paint work but yeah this one i'm highly impressed with this looks amazing the only thing is it's kind of warped so i have to kind of heat it up to fix it all right now let's look at the figure itself and we get started with the head sculpt first and i gotta say i'm thoroughly impressed with the sculpting work of this it looks awesome has that like beaten down battered look like the different damage done to his helmet which looks awesome I'm thoroughly impressed with the sculpting work. It looks awesome to me. It kind of has like that Magneto thing on his cheeks. <laughs> Some of the comments below is going to correct me what it's actually called. But I like the sculpting work of it. The funny thing is when I first saw this figure and the head sculpt, I initially thought it kind of gave off that same vibe of uh, the Ben Affleck Batman that came in that movie Flash uh, figure. Like kind of gave the same vibe as this. But obviously the... The Knights of Steel figure looks way better than this head sculpt, but it just reminded me of that initially. But yeah, this looks way better than that. <laughs> now that same level of attention to detail in the sculpting work of his head sculpt is represented throughout the rest of the figure. I think the armor looks great, as well as the other pieces on him. The only thing that one could argue is that the paint work could have been a little bit better on some of the armor, which you could argue they could be a little bit more washed, but overall I think it looks fantastic. And then taking a look at the back of the figure, you can see a sheath is inserted in between the cape. And speaking of the cape, I actually like, it's not a neutral cape, but it's windswept, but at a subtle, at a subtle direction. It's towards the left side, but it's not ridiculously towards the left if we've seen it in other figures. So like I mentioned before, if they're going to do capes, if it's not cloth capes and it's going to be sculpted, I would rather they do a more neutral or a slightly windswept cape instead of just harshly in one direction. But that's just my preference. What do you think? And another thing I wanted to point out in his like faux butterfly slash shoulder disc, it also has that same pattern that you see on the rest of his outfit. I kind of like that attention to detail. They could have easily went cheap and lazy and just put like a blank, uh, what is this, like navy blue in there, but they also sculpted the little disc in there, which is cool. So I got to give credit where credit's due. It looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to dive too much in articulation, but I did want to point something out. I do like how they put the shoulder cut underneath the pads because I can't tell you in other figures before where they have the pads molded or glued onto the shoulder. And when you swivel it, it kind of over time, it'll wear out and fall off. I think it's a good move putting the shoulder cut right below the shoulder armor, in my opinion, because that way it doesn't put too much stress on the armor piece getting removed. Right now it's gonna jump right into size comparisons and first size comparison, here's the Dark Knights of Steel Batman standing next to a couple other Batman variations we've gotten this year. We have the Gladiator Batman on the left, which has been one of my favorites. And like I said, this might be my number one for the year, but I don't know yet, well, we'll see. And on the right side is the Batman Page Punchers fighting the Frozen version, which I really like this one too. It's a toss up which one of these Batmans I like, but it's crazy to me, like the different variations of Batman we've gotten this year. And you know what? I'm all for it. And looking at all these side by side, like I, it comes down to these two. I really want to like this one more than the Gladiator one, but the Gladiator one just has so much better attention to detail and paint work. But the only thing that's keeping this one better is the cape. Like this one, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just harsh directions of cape. Like it, it needs to be neutral in my opinion, just because that way... It gives you more range with posing as opposed to just one direction being swept. 
an excise comparison. Here's a couple other figures from year one of McFarland Toys having a DC license. We have the Collect Build Merciless on the left and the Asriel on the right. And man, when you look at like these two, they kind of go well together in my opinion. And also when you just think back, I know this year has been a year of a lot of reuse. When you look back at year one, we really had some really good looking figures in terms of sculpt. And next size comparison, here's Batman standing next to a couple Wonder Woman figures from McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. We have the Death Metal version on the left and the Last Night on Earth version on the right. And speaking of Wonder Woman, how about that announcement? We finally have first look at the classic Wonder Woman from McFarlane Toys. And now time for a random ass size comparison that only one other person in the world understands this reference to. And sorry if you do get tired of seeing this random ass size comparison, but not really. Sorry, not sorry. Anyways, still keeping it under the McFarlane Toys brand. Here he is standing next to a couple of My Hero Academia figures. We have Deku, not Todoroki, and Ochako. My shit in heart. All right, some more of our thoughts on the figure. I like it a lot. I'm glad they're kind of doing like these different variations of Batman because I'm a huge fan of Batman. And like my title said, we're essentially in a renaissance period of Batman figures being made because if you look at the 90s, there were so many different Batmans being made. And I kind of think that's what's happening right now with the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. And I know for some collectors out there and DC fans, they don't want all these variations of Batman. You want more variety in the line. And conversely, I'll say that's been happening this year even more so than before. When you look at all the characters they've been flushing out in the line, like Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Alan Scott, Green Lantern, Hawkman, and it just keeps going. I think with the Collector Edition line, we're going to see much more variety with different characters people want. And on the flip side, to us Batman fans, we're getting more different deep cut Batmans like Dark Knights of Steel Batman. Which, again, I really like this figure. I don't know if I'd put it over the Gladiator Batman, but it is going to be in my top 10 for sure. But the next Batman I'd like to see them make is Ninja Batman. Now, I know Mattel did their own Collect and Connect version a couple years ago, but... I'd like to see McFarlane Toys take on it, especially with their sculpting work and their track record. I mean, I love Gladiator Batman and the Fighting the Frozen Batman, and this is definitely up there. It'll definitely be on my top 10 list. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. YouTubers, we'll be picking this up. How are you feeling about the different Batmans in the line? And do you think they're doing enough now with the other characters because they just announced the classic Wonder Woman? Let me know in the comments below. And like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribe to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.